to Michael Stout Stable is looking to win for the third time, having won a handicap here over the mile at Ascot last time, was a winner at Newmarket the time before. And Golden Spinner for Rafe Beckett's yard, this four-year-old filly, uh, was a winner earlier on this uh, season at York. That was over the seven furlongs there. Does have form, though, with cutting the ground. Join us for the 320 race, the listed race at Ascot. Up next, we've got more racing from Ascot, and uh, we're now on to the 20 past three race there at the Berkshire Circuit, where Nathra is the 11 to four favourite, or was the favourite, favourite around about 11 to four thereabouts uh, this morning for that race coming up at 3.20. Well, Nathra hasn't run since uh, last September when finishing third in Group 2 company. Turning the clock back then at Nathra was the, the winner of the uh, seven furlongs Nell Gwynstakes uh, over 12 months ago. Things didn't quite go according to plan after that. And Nathra is the market leader on this return to race course action. Mittens for Michael Stout Stable is looking to win for the third time, having won a handicap here over the mile at Ascot last time. Was a winner at Newmarket the time before. And Golden Spinner for Rafe Beckett's yard, this four year old filly, uh, was a winner earlier on this uh, season at York. That was over the seven furlongs there. Does have form though with cutting the ground. Join us for the 320 race, the listed race at Ascot. Up next, we've got more racing from Ascot, and uh, we're now on to the 20 past three race there at the Berkshire Circuit, where Nathra is the 11 to four favourite, or was the favourite, favourite around about 11 to four thereabouts uh, this morning for that race coming up at 3.20. Well, Nathra hasn't run since uh, last September when finishing third in Group 2 company. Turning the clock back then at Nathra was the, the winner of the uh, seven furlongs Nell Gwynstakes uh, over 12 months ago. Things didn't quite go according to plan after that. And Nathra is the market leader on this return to race course action. Mittens for Michael Stout Stable is looking to win for the third time, having won a handicap here over the mile at Ascot last time was a winner at Newmarket the time before and Golden Spinner for Rafe Beckett's yard this four year old filly uh, was a winner earlier on this uh, season at York that was over the seven furlongs there does have form though with cutting the ground join us for the 320 race the listed race at Ascot up next, we've got more racing from Ascot, and uh, we're now on to the 20 past three race there at the Berkshire Circuit, where Nathra is the 11 to four favourite, or was the favourite, favourite around about 11 to four thereabouts uh, this morning for that race coming up at 3.20. Well, Nathra hasn't run since uh, last September when finishing third in Group 2 company. Turning the clock back then at Nathra was the, the winner of the uh, seven furlongs Nell Gwynstakes uh, over 12 months ago. Things didn't quite go according to plan after that. And Nathra is the market leader on this return to race course action. Mittens for Michael Stout Stable is looking to win for the third time, having won a handicap here over the mile. And welcome back now to the live action at Ascot where Nathra is the 3 to 1 joint favorite along with Mittens for this 320 race 5 to 1 Golden Stunner 8 to 1 about Pirouette it's 8 to 1 on her toes and then it's 11 to 1 Whispering Bell 25 to 1 about Materialistic same price as Urban Fox and it's 8080 to 1 the price of Rebel Surge. That's a full show for this to one Mr. Race. Pirouette. It's eight Carrying to one insurance. on her toes. GBF Valiant Stakes for Phillies and, and Mares over the round the mile here. Eleven Ascot. to one. Whispering Bell. Stalls. Twenty-five to one about materialistic. On this uh, day, which Same is supposed to be the height of summer, but eight oh eighty to one. More autumnal price fresh Rebel and Surge. Just a full show. This to one Mr. race Pir here at Ascot today. Ahead of tomorrow's big race, the King George Six and Queen Elizabeth Stakes. Golden Stunner goes in, 
Racing over the round. Marl Urban Fox is in. Goldstone is in. That's it, ready to go. So round mile in front of them here, and they're off. And Rebel Surge began very smartly up against the inside running rail and right up there with the pace is Urban Fox also running prominently pirouette as they go through the early part of the race. Up along the outside and Handy is on her toes tracking the leaders after Urban Fox's Golden Stunner back in mid-division Whispering Bell and Nathra they're racing together in front of Mittens. So they come up up the hill and we've got a new leader it is a Tis But A Dream. Tis But A Dream came from a wide berth and Tis But A Dream Dreams in front by a length and a bit now to Honor Toes in second place. Pirouette and Golden Stunner are running together, followed by Urban Fox. Further back to Whispering Bell, Mittens and Nathra. Uh, having broken smartly, Rebel Surge is now off the pace and disputes last with Materialistic. So they're running towards the halfway mark and it is but a dream in front is but a dream a winner last time in front here by just over a length to honor toes in second pirouette the inside of golden stunner is posted three wide between horses urban fox and then running three wide to the turn mittens to the inside running rail is whispering bell who is chased by nathra is behind a wall of horses at the moment we'll need some gaps the last of two are rebel surge and materialistic they're up the two furlong marker well into the straight and it's tis but a dream taken on for the the lead by on her toes pirouettes a length and a bit away from them being followed then to the outside by urban fox mittens is in the clear nathra has got a bit of ground to find against the running rail inside the final furlong on her toes tis but a dream pirouette urban fox finishing well then mittens nathra with nowhere to go and it's on her toes who's just in front of pirouette and tis but a dream on her toes the winner tight second pirouette possibly just second from tis but a dream in third on her toes is the winner for Joe Fanning, uh, William Haggis, and Chibley Park winning the listed race this afternoon at eight to one. Eight to one, the price of on her toes. Well, regarding Nathra, she was behind a wall of runners on this her return to action. She just well didn't have anywhere to go. To be fair, in the last 150 yards, and Frankie eased off. Hopefully, there'll be another day for for Nathra. I think connections you'd like to connections would be pretty pleased with them there's a bit to bit to build on now from Nathra but on her toes has won it for William Haggis Chiefly Park and Joe Fanning finished third last time that was uh, on the July course at Newmarket run in eighth place at the Royal Meeting what was that some like Sandringham handicap I think off the top of, top of my head on her toes wins here and eight to one on her toes winning for the Chiefly Park racing it's a bit rough in the early part of the race having broken smartly rebel surge was shuffled right back in the field in that first furlong but on her tis but a dream was the one who made the running but on her toes was always prominent running in second place pounced at the two marker and on her toes number seven is the winner at eight to one uh tight call for second place just waiting for second to be confirmed now pirouette and tis but a dream i reckon pirouette's probably second ahead of tis but a dream in third just waiting for the judge to confirm that and that is the case eight to one in fact the sp of the first three horses home is eight to one so here now confirmation of that result of the listed race at ascot this afternoon Ascot 320, first number seven on her toes, eight to one, second number four, pirouette, eight to one, third number eight, tis but a dream, eight to one, and ten ran. So there you go, that's the result of the latest race at Ascot this afternoon. The 16 to one also for Love the Leader, 16. colours here the Mixons as the previous winner so that'll be interesting to see how that one gets on and Prince Cup is the 25 to 1 shot vote of confidence and winter are the two non-runners Sebastian Beach 5 to 1 the winner of the 305 at Utox the Destiny's Gold currently the 11 to 8 favourite for the next you talk to the 305, first number two, Sebastian Beach, a five to one. Second number three, Wade Harper, 11 to four. Non-runner four and five ran. 
Yeah, good ride there by Aidan Coleman. Just had that little bit left up his sleeve and Sebastian Beach was a willing partner and really did stay on strongly after the last to get the better of Wade Harper. And Deadly Move, who has to said, was a little bit disappointing. Travelled OK, jumped OK, just didn't find anything. Riley's Minor, very disappointing. Led for almost two circuits but just found absolutely nothing. But Sebastian Beach, a winner for John Joe O'Neill and Aidan Coleman on board. That was the 3.05, 3.40 up next. Got a handicap hurdle coming up over two and a half miles. Destiny's... For the 3.30, where I can tell you the non-runners are Jack Blaine and uh, State Red Residence with uh, Melon... Melanie Millie, the favourite, seven to two. She's off four to one, nine to Springforth, uh, flying on site seven to one, twelve to one. Ambuzo Campos, along with Cosmic Sky, is fourteen to one. Bar, join us in a moment. Coming next, we've got more racing from uh, North Yorkshire. We're off to Thirsk for the three thirty, where I can tell you the non-runners are Jack Blaine and uh, State Red Residence with uh, Melon. Melanie Millie, the favourite, seven to two. She's off four to one, nine to Springforth, uh, flying on site seven to one, twelve to one. Ambuzo Campos, along with Cosmic Sky, is fourteen to one. Bar, join us in a moment. Coming next, we've got more racing from uh, North Yorkshire. We're off to Thirsk for the three thirty, where I can tell you the non-runners are Jack Blaine and uh, State Red Residence with uh, Melon. Melanie Millie, the favourite, seven to two. She's off four to one, nine to Springforth, uh, flying on site seven to one, twelve to one. Ambuzo Campos, along with Cosmic Sky, is fourteen to one. Bar, join us in a moment. Coming next, we've got more racing from uh, North Yorkshire. We're off to Thirsk for the three thirty, where I can tell you the non-runners are Jack Blaine and uh, State Red Residence with uh, Melon. Melanie Millie, the favourite, seven to two. She's off four to one, nine to Springforth, uh, flying on site seven to one, twelve to one. Ambuzo Campos, along with Cosmic Sky, is fourteen to one. Bar, join us in a moment. Coming next, we've got more racing from uh, North Yorkshire. We're off to Thirsk for the three thirty, where I can tell you the non-runners are Jack Blaine and uh, State Red Residence with uh, Melon. Melanie Millie, the favourite, seven to two. She's off four to one, nine to Springforth, uh, flying on site seven to one, twelve to one. Ambuzo Campos, along with Cosmic Sky, is fourteen to one. Bar, join us in a moment. Coming next, we've got more racing from uh, North Yorkshire. We're off to Thirsk for the three thirty, where I can tell you the non-runners are Jack Blaine and uh, State Red Residence with uh, Melon. Melanie Millie, the favourite, seven to two. She's off four to one, nine to Springforth, uh, flying on site seven to one, twelve to one. Ambuzo Campos, along with Cosmic Sky, is fourteen to one. Bar, join us in a moment. Coming next, we've got more racing from uh, North Yorkshire. We're off to Thirsk for the three thirty, where I can tell you the non-runners are Jack Blaine and uh, State Red Residence with uh, Melon. Melanie Millie, the favourite, seven to two. She's off four to one. Nine. Ah, welcome back now to the meeting at Thirsk, where Jack Blaine, number three, number five, state residents and non-runners, fourteen of them lining up this stunning handicap over seven furlongs. Clear favourite now is She's Zoff. That's number eight for John Quinn, PJ McDonald on board. Doesn't have a great draw. Comes out of stall number thirteen here on this round course at seven to two. That is the favourite, however. Melanie Millie he has an even worse draw for Ruth Carr, James Sullivan, drawn in sixteen at four to one. Spring fourth, uh, Tony Hamilton, another wide seed, or wide draw rather, it's five to one, seven to one the price of flying on site. It's ten to one uh, cosmic sky, twelve to one Kelpie Spirit, sixteen to one the latest price for Panther in Pink, along with uh, Canny Zay, number 16, and it's 28 to 1 and bigger the rest of them. For this, the 330 race over at Thirsk, where She's Off is the 7 to 2 favourite. And She's Off for John Quinn and PJ McDonald.
They are going in and watching Melanie Millie going in. Melanie Millie's gone in. Melanie Millie who was second here behind Rosie Ryan over this course and distance recently. Well, he'd beaten a whisker as well. Beaten a short head. And uh, it won't be long now. I think the last couple are about to move up for this selling handicap here at Thirsk. Here's Gareth Topham. Chevalier du Lac, the last one in, lined up, and they're off and racing with quite an awkward beginning for Idea to Dream for this, the buy online discount at firstgracecourse.net at selling handicap. Early on, Cosmic Sky is away well, as is the grey Panther in pink, who's now moved through to take a slender advantage, with up towards the outside, Melanie Millie, well poised early on from that very wide draw, has done well. Further back then to spring forth, he races towards the outside of Flying Onside and Canizé down along the inner. Another length and a half back to Zebedee Star, who's racing in midfield just ahead of the well-punted favourite She's Off who's working a little wider out. Kelpie Spirit is over to the inside then Chevalier du Lac with uh, King of Castile well back in the field at this stage as is Albizu Campos along the inside and then I Dare to Dream and uh, straightening up in last will be Night Dress who must be 15 lengths off this pair of greys who are trading blows up front with uh, Melanie Millie now moving through into the lead past uh, Panther in Pink who's now being driven along spring forth likewise towards the outside of Cosmic Sky who's still Travels all right, and then a little wider out on the track is Zebedee Star, who's beginning to finish off the race quite well. Under two furlongs to go away to the far left, the maroon sleeves and cap of She's Off is also coming home powerfully. Melanie Millie with company with a furlong to run. Here's Cosmic Sky with back in third Zebedee Star, and then She's Off, and it's Cosmic Sky who's gone to the front with 100 yards left to go. Melanie Millie over to the far side is fighting on for pressure, but it's Cosmic Sky under Sammy Joe Bell, a double on the day for Tim Easterby, goes on to win the selling handicap from Melanie Millie in second. Back in third, Zebedee star and in fourth she's off yeah results of the selling handicap there number 11 cosmic sky the winner nine melanie millie in second and number 14 zebedee star was back in third spot just for the record there she's off number eight in fourth but only 14 went to post in the end in that uh, selling handicap over at thirsk this afternoon, winner winning really well in the end. Simon Joe Bell on board for Tim Easterby. Tim in double form today with uh, a winner with Silver Starlight in the previous race, the nursery for uh, the same owners, I think. Yeah, same, same, uh, same partnership or West. Well, it's linked to the same partnership anyway. So Cosmic Sky wins the selling handicap really well. Melanie Millie second, Zebedee Star back in third spot. She's off just for the record in fourth in the 3.30 at Thirsk. That was the selling handicap over seven furlongs. Winner always to the fore there. Cosmic Sky racing keenly in the hood. Raced prominently on the inside ring rail. Pace setter nearly part of the race was Panther in pink. So just waiting for the SPs to be confirmed from Thirsk of race number five, the 3.30 there, the selling handicap. Still three more races to come from Thirsk this afternoon. Melanie Millie there just in second and Zebedee Star back in third. That's the one, two, three confirmed. SPs, nine to one the winner, four to one the second and 28 to one was the price of the third. Thirsk, 3.30, first number 11, Cosmic Sky, 9 to 1, second number 9, Melanie Millie, 4 to 1, third number 14, Zebedee Star, 28 to 1, non-runners numbers 3 and 5, and 14 ran. So that was uh, the action there over at Thirsk, that was the 3.30. Coming up next, we've got more racing from the meeting at Ascot. We've got the 355 race there at Ascot to look forward to, where Appeared is the, the favourite there. And uh, Red Galileo second in. Appeared around about 9 to 4 earlier on today, or that sort of price. Appeared for Roger Vera and Sylvester de Souza. They're looking for a double. Second to Rare Rhythm at the Royal Meeting, that good handicap. Rare Rhythm has sing, since franked the form. Red Galileo was behind that day. Uh, Red Galileo second in this afternoon, ahead of Tordia and uh, Galapia. Uh, Tordia 
for David Amara's yard was the winner of four races last season. 16 to 1 Pongo Twizzleton, Aidan Coleman, John Joe Neal looking for a double in the same colours here, the Mixons as the previous winner. So that'll be interesting to see how that one gets on. And Prince Cup is the 25 to 1 shot. Vote of confidence on Winter Lude are the two non runners. Sebastian Beach 5 to 1, the winner of the 305 at Utox. Destiny's Gold currently the 11 to 8 favourite for the next. You talk to the 305, first number two, Sebastian Beach, a five to one. Second number three, Wade Harper, 11 to four. Non-runner four and five ran. Yeah, good ride there by Aidan Coleman. Just had that little bit left up his sleeve and Sebastian Beach was a willing partner and really did stay on strongly after the last to get the better of Wade Harper. And deadly move, who has to said, was a little bit disappointing. Travelled okay, jumped okay, just didn't find anything. Riley's minor, very disappointing, led for almost two circuits but just found absolutely nothing but Sebastian Beach a winner for John Joe O'Neill and Aidan Coleman on board that was the 305 340 up next got a handicap hurdle coming up over two and a half miles Destiny's goal Sam Twiston Davis and the good doctor 11 to 8 heads the market there runner up behind a restraint of trade at Southall last time off a mark of 118 off the same mark here green zone for Henry Book and Lisa Harrison is 5 to 2 Winner of its last two starts, both in a purse. Started off 95, now off 105. Yeah, let's cut in. Down at the post. Down at the post for the next race here at Utah. So Destiny's Gold 2 to 1, open 13 to 8. 5 to 2, Green Zone, Polar Brook 5 to 1. 8 from 12, Pongo Twizzler, looking to be John Joe O'Neill and Aidan Coleman, a quick fire double. Mondolo is 10 to 1, 12 to 1, love the leader. Ashcott Boy 16 and Prince Cup 50 to 1. Winterlude and Voice of Confidence, a devote of confidence, don't go here. Destiny's Gold, the favourite. As I said, the money for Pongo Twizzleton is quite interesting here. And uh, John Joe O'Neill, Aidan Coleman, and looks as if it's, it's lined up as if it's going to make the running just as the previous winner did. So, very interesting. Of course, same colour as Sebastian Beach. The Mexicans won the previous contest. And Pongo Twizzleton, uh, going by Champs Elysees, tongue-tied pieces for the first time, four-year-old, and uh, heads the market here. It doesn't head the market, but it's been well supported. It's still two to one. Destiny's or Green Zone winner of its last two at Perth. Both of those in June started off 95, 105 here. Escapes a penalty for that uh, latest victory there being a conditional jockeys contest so could still be well in green zone and an interesting runner here a polar brook for brian hughes and derek shaw third by restraint of trade at the last time in that same race destiny's gold was second a polar brook uh, at the same weights here about two lengths between them pongo towards an eight to one from 14 to one the one that's been supported did run here on the 2nd of July beaten by Thea was well beaten on that occasion so that was one run back after a fall so might have been uh, just uh, the horse getting his confidence back there so it's interesting cheap pieces on tongue tie on Mondello next in the market Mondello Harry Cobden on board for Richie Willicott finished behind never equaled at Foss last back in March haven't seen this one since March love the leader for Brendan Powell, Powell and Johnny Farrelly that been nibbled at finished behind Terry the Fish he had beaten 26 lengths uh, last time that was on the 11th of July hadn't seen it since September so might well have needed that Ashcut Boy for Dave Noonan and Neil Moore Holland and Prince Cup James Davis on board that one for Laura Hurley well beaten last time out 8th of 8th so won't be too much longer before the starter gives them the go ahead 15 to 8 briefly back out to 2 to 1 Destiny's goal Pongo Twizzles and the money 8 to 1 now and it won't be too much longer now before the flags are raised here at Utoxeter race number 4 on the card here just walking towards the starter 2.5 miles the trip And uh, looking by the jockeys, just looking at the way they're walking around at the start, Ashcut Boy and Pongo Twizzlers are going to set the gallop here. Coming into line, and off and racing, the 340 here at Utoxeter, the Horcross Hall Summer a Madness Handicap Hurdle. It is 
away and racing and on run towards the first it is Pongo Twizzard and Ashcott Boy that cut out the early stages from Prince Cup and Destiny's Gold upside each other for third and fourth spot as they jump the first watching them over all over safely at the back of the pack over flight number one was Mondello held up by Harry Cobden as they continue their journey down the back straight Pongo Twizzleton on the outside of Ashcott Boy lead up from on the inside Prince Cup Destiny's Gold towards the outside followed through then by Polar Prook who hugs the rail Upsides Polar Brook is love the leader has lengthened our back to green zone and still Mondello at the back of the pack as they come towards this next flight of hurdles all over that one safely and as they breast the rise start this slightly downhill run and uh, the advantage with Ascot Boy to the inside here of Pongo Twizzleton Prince Cup on the inside of Destiny's Gold Polar Brook still well there love the leader out wide of green zone and Mondello at the back of the pack so the jumping completed in the back straight and they'll start the turn towards the straight with three flights in it the home straight on the first circuit three flights and then do it all again Pongo Twizzleton Ashcut Boy lead up only setting a sensible gallop here from Prince Cup on the inside of the favourite Destiny's Gold Polar Brook and Brian Hughes to the inside of Love the Leader and Brendan Powell Green Zone and Mondello straightening that then towards the first of three flights of hurdles this section of the track, Bongo Twizzleton and Ashcott Boy come towards this first flight in the straight, both jump it nicely all over safely, although Green Zone rather dived at it, got to the other side safely, Henry Brook just had to slip his reins momentarily there as they quickly on down towards the middle flight of three Pongo Twizzleton, Ashcott Boy, Prince Cup Destiny's Gold been the same four throughout the contest so far, all over that one safely better jump on the outside there by Green Zone making way down towards next flight this will be the last in the circuits time and Ashcut boy it is that leads up from Pongo Twizzleton on the outside Prince Cup Destiny's Gold Polar Brook slight mistake there by I love the leader and then green zone and still Mondello just content to sit at the rear of the field here there's about eight lengths between first and last as they go past the judge they've got one complete circuit to go and Ashcut boy still leads narrowly from Pongo Twizzleton length and half back to Prince Cup on the inside of Destiny's Gold and Sam Twist and Davis Polar Brook love the leader in green zone in a line and a length of Mondello past their point of departure swinging left handed to take them down the back straight here at Utoxeter Pongo Twizzleton and Ashcut Boy been the one two throughout the contest Prince Cup always been there in third towards the inside challenging they're followed through by Destiny's Gold Green Zone now the pace is somewhat slack in here because there's only about four lengths between first and last as you jump the first flight down the back they're all over it safely and these two leaders have got five in line just in behind them and adding yet further back to Mondello. Ashcut Boy narrowly from Pongo Twizzleton. Destiny's Gold on the outside then of Prince Cup. Polar Brook trying to sneak up the inside. Green Zone, Love the Leader and Mondello. On towards the next flight of hurdles. This is four from home. They've still got about a mile to race and as they come down towards it, Pongo Twizzleton on the outside of Ashcut Boy, they jump it together. Polar Brook a slight mistake towards the inside. Good jump down the centre by Prince Cup out wide of Destiny's Gold no move yet from Twist and Davis Green Zone tracking that one with Love the Leader and Mondello still travels very well at the rear of the field and some five six links off the lead two leaders Pongo Twizzleton and Ashcut Boy they've got about three quarters of a mile to race from this point they start the swing out of the back straight Ashcut Boy Pongo Twizzleton been the one two throughout Polar Brook has made his way through on the inside to have to share of that third spot with Prince Cup and Destiny's Gold Mondello's gone past love the leader green zone is still well there there's still plenty of chances here it's going to turn into a sprint half a mile to race they straighten up they've got three flights of hurdles to jump stick into the inside as they come down towards three from home there's almost five in line as they jump in the best jump on the outside by green zone comes through with destiny's gold they quickly go on green zone and destiny's gold polar brook switched off the rail comes through to take the third spot but Green Zone travels very sweetly out in front here under Henry Brook down towards two from home Green Zone over from Destiny's Goal Polar Brook giving chase Mondello from the back of the pack Green Zone Henry Brook hasn't really moved as yet just shakes the reins up now and Green Zone 
Brown's gone two or three lengths to the clear as they come towards the final flight, skips over it nicely. And Green Zone's away and gone here. Henry Brook takes a look round. There's no dangers at the moment. Green Zone just being pushed out, hands and heels, and he's valued for a lot more here. Mm -hmm. This is a good performance. Green Zone wins it well. Batlon for second. Mondello just gets there in front of Destiny's Gold, followed through by Polar Brook. Then came the long time leader, Ashcut Boy, Pongo Twizzleton, and Love the Leader. Well, really good performance by Green Zone. Did it really well. Was unpenalised for his second of his two victories at Perth last month. But it's absolutely bolted up here. Really good performance. It was certainly, certainly value for a lot more. And uh, the handicapper will certainly have his say now. But, um, well completes the hat trick every horse did that you'd be delighted if you own them or indeed back them well, that was a really nice green zone 10 stone 13 on his back here in a 0 to 120 good running second by Mondello he's run a nice race and the third horse home was Destiny's Gold that's how they finished just waiting for those SPs to filter through. Green Zone, Mondello, and Destiny's Gold. Utoxeter, 3 of 40. First, number 8, Green Zone, 5 to 2. Second, number 9, Mondello, at 7 to 1. And third, number 2, Destiny's Gold, the 2 to 1 favourite. 1 and 4 were the non runners. Left a field of 8. Yeah, completes the hat trick green zone. Really nice performance. Handicap will certainly have his say now. Was winner of his last two. Started winning off 95, then won off 105. I'm penalised for that last run in the conditional jockeys contest. That was on the 16th of June. He's come back here and absolutely bolted up. Really good performance here by this improving son of Bush Ranger. And there'll certainly be more to come from him, certainly during the summer months. The 415 contest is up next. Got a mare's handicap hurdle over two miles and four furlongs be interesting to see how the market shapes up for this particular contest and uh, as i say just a field of five going to post a bredain rebel for the candlish team but it's misspent for harry and dan skelton nine of four finished by a raw debutant last time and uh, it's out of a race mare called Kasha new she was pretty good richard phillips used to train her debut here for the skelton team last seen as I said behind Royal Debutant that was at Market Raisin and that was back in uh, in April indeed the last time we saw Miss Spent moves from Lucy Wadham to Dan Skelton and uh, last victory was when beating Royal Debutant that was in November of last year it's in here off a mark of 106 Bredain Rebel who was a winner here beat Comanche Chieftain by her David Noonan was on board on that occasion it was a 33 to 1 shot on that occasion Sean Quinlan on board for Jenny Candish is 5 to 2 here for mark of 105 Fit the Brief Adrian Heskin and Tom George next in the market 3 to 1 Clemency Clemency, formerly trained, of course, by Nicky Henderson, now in the hands of Don McCain, Will Kennedy. They're looking for a double on the card. Is a five to one shot. Hopes, wishes for Barry Brennan and Tommy Dowling taking off the seven is twelve to one. Been nibbled at that one. Finished fifth last time out, Norman Carly, but been nibbled at at prices. And that's how they bet for this upcoming Mayor's Handicap Hurdle. We'll be back to you talk some of all the action very shortly. Toxeter, 3 of 40. First, number 8, Green Zone, 5 to 2. Second, number 9, Mondello at 7 to 1. And third, number 2, Destiny's Gold, the 2 to 1 favourite. 1 and 4 were the non runners. Left a field of 8. Yeah, completes the hat trick, Green Zone. Really nice performance. Handic Royal meeting that good handicap, rare rhythm since Frank the form. Red Galileo was behind that day. Uh, Red Galileo second in this afternoon ahead of Tordia and uh, Galapia. Uh, Tordia for David O'Mara's yard was the winner of four races last season and Galapia 
I was uh, the winner of two races this season in the spring at Leicester and Epsom. Join us for coverage of the 3.55 at Ascot. Coming up next, we've got more racing from the meeting at Ascot. We've got the 3.55 race there at Ascot to look forward to, where appeared is the, the favourite there. And uh, Red Galileo second in, appeared around about 9 to 4 earlier on today, or that sort of price, appeared for Roger Vare and Sylvester de Souza. They're looking for a double. Second to Rare Rhythm at the Royal Meeting, that good handicap. Rare Rhythm has sing, since franked the form. Red Galileo was behind that day. Uh, Red Galileo second in this afternoon, ahead of Tordia and uh, Galapia. Uh, Tordia for David O'Mara's yard was the winner of four races last season, and Galapia was uh, the winner of two races this season in the spring at Leicester and Epsom. Join us for coverage of the 3.55 at Ascot. Coming up next, we've got more racing from the meeting at Ascot. We've got the 3.55 race there at Ascot to look forward to, where appeared is the, the favourite there. And uh, Red Galileo second in, appeared around about 9 to 4 earlier on today, or that sort of price, appeared for Roger Vare and Sylvester de Souza. They're looking for a double. Second to Rare Rhythm at the Royal Meeting, that good handicap. Rare Rhythm has since franked the form. Red Galileo was behind that day. Uh, Red Galileo second in this afternoon, ahead of Tordia and uh, Galapia. Uh, Tordia for David O'Mara's yard was the winner of four races last season, and Galapia was uh, the winner of two races this season in the spring at Leicester and Epsom. Join us for coverage of the 3.55 at Ascot. Coming up next, we've got more racing from the meeting at Ascot. We've got the 3.55 race there at Ascot to look forward to, where appeared is the, the favourite there. And uh, Red Galileo second in, appeared around about 9 to 4 earlier on today, or that sort of price, appeared for Roger Vare and Sylvester de Souza. They're looking for a double. Second to Rare Rhythm at the Royal Meeting, that good handicap. Rare Rhythm has sing, since franked the form. Red Galileo was behind that day. Uh, Red Galileo second in this afternoon, ahead of Tordia and uh, Galapia. Uh, Tordia for David O'Mara's yard was the winner of four races last season, and Galapia was uh, the winner of two races this season in the spring at Leicester and Epsom. Join us for coverage of the 3.55 at Ascot. Coming up next, we've got more racing from the meeting at Ascot. We've got the 3.55 race there at Ascot to look forward to, where appeared is the, the favourite there. And uh, Red Galileo second in, appeared around about 9 to 4 earlier on today, or that sort of price, appeared for Roger Vare and Sylvester de Souza. They're looking for a double. Second to Rare Rhythm at the Royal Meeting, that good handicap. Rare Rhythm has sing, since franked the form. Red Galileo was behind that day. Uh, Red Galileo second in this afternoon, ahead of Tordia and uh, Galapia. Uh, Tordia for David O'Mara's yard was the winner of four races. And welcome back to the live action this afternoon. We're off to Ascot now for the John Guest handicap. And uh, this race is over a mile and a half, where it's two to one appeared. Red Galileo seven to one. And number eight on the card is Fidawi. Uh, Fidawi is currently trading at fifteen to two. Eight to one about Galapia. Eight to one King Ballet. Uh It is uh, seventeen to two Saunter. Nine to one Tordia. It's 11 to 1 and a bigger the rest of them for this race coming up from Ascot. Runners then going up into the starting stalls. Appeared the 2 to 1 favourite. Got form there, finishing second behind and that uh, rare rhythm. That was uh, to the Royal Meeting. King Ballet, stable companion of Appeared, is about to go in. That one drawn in stall number 10. For this mile and a half race. Stand by. And they're racing. 
and uh, Tordia was the last one to break with King Bellet the first to show and leads by about a length already to Fidawi who's now instantly overtaken by Noble Gift Noble Gift being rushed up to the inside and of King Bellet and it is Noble Gift and King Bellet appeared not settling behind the leaders to the outside is Fidawi the leaders are trapped by Sanokian Star and further back to uh, Gordor Palin to the wide outside to the inside is Galapia who is being chased by Saunter and the last two as they go towards Swinley Bottom in second last is Seaport and Tordia the bat marker who has just been bustled along early. So down in Swinley Bottom half a mile completed and it is Noble Gift Callum Shepherd in front by three parts of a length to King Bellet second place a length away in third is Sanokian Star is being followed to the outside by Fidawi. They're the front Four, and they are followed closely by Red Galileo's on the inside rail ahead of Appeared and Sylvester de Souza, who's looking for a double on the card. Gordor Palin is next, that one being chased by Galapiat to the inside of Saunter, break of about three lengths to Seaport, and Tordia gives them start. Coming on up the hill, and it's Noble Gift, the leader, by about half a length to King Bellet and Jack Mitchell, two lengths away is Sanokian Star the hands of Joe Fanning, four and a half furlongs left to go, still close up Fidawi, and also well to the fore has appeared, who's got plenty of daylight now with Gordopalin to the wide outside, Sanokin Star being pushed along, Red Galileo being shaken up behind runners, further back then two saunters being chased to the inside by Galapia, and the last two are still Seaport and Tordia, so inside the three furlong marker, and King Bellet has gone for home at the top of the straight, being followed to the inside by uh, on the inside by Noble Gift then for Darwi appeared is in the clear to the wide outside followed by Godarpalin and Red Galileo is trying to pick up and they're inside the two and it is King Bellet in front King Bellet Godarpalin to the wide outside Martin Dwyer this is getting a bit rough now uh, being tightened up there has appeared between horses and appeared has been snatched up as Godarpalin has hit the front Godarpalin putting it to King Bellet dropping to third is Red Galileo dropping to fourth place appeared it's Godarpalin and Martin Dwyer in front of King Bellet by half a length and Godapolin will take the honours. Godapolin the winner, tight for second place, possibly just the Godolphin runner, Red Galileo, snatching second place up along the outside. Well, that was a rough race. Godapolin has won it. Um, appeared, held every chance there. They got tightened up. Was struggling to quicken up, to be fair. But Godorplin's edge right in has hampered appeared. Another one to be snatched up was Fidawi. Uh, Godorplin has gone on to win, has beaten King Bellet. But King Bellet wasn't inconvenienced. I think Godorplin will keep the race. I think Martin Dwyer might have a holiday. Godorplin's won it. Second place has gone to Red Galileo, who never, although banging contention in, in the closing stages, never looked like winning. And then third, well, it's tight for third between King Bellet, who was always there, and the staying on Saunter. Very messy race indeed. Judge confirming it now. Red Galileo second. King Bellet was third. So 11 Godorpel in the winner. Four Red Galileo second. Three King Bellet third. 11 to one. Seven to one. Eight to one. I reckon, I reckon the winner will keep the race. If they do hold the inquiry, that is. Um, no inquiry announced, I should stress. I think the winner will keep the race, but I think Martin Dwyer might just have a have a, a break, have a holiday for that. Ascot, 3.55. First number 11, Gordopalin, 11 to 1. Second number 4, Red Galileo, 7 to 1. Third number 3, King Bellet, 8 to 1. 11 ran. So that's the result there over at Ascot in the 355. You join us ahead of the racing at Thirsk. Next race at Thirsk is the 405 race uh, where my girl Maisie is the non-runner. Oriental Lily is favourite here at 7-4. It's 5-1 to one 
Kai Kai, Yorkshire Pudding five to one, thirteen to two Cody Cat, eight to one Lexington Sky, and fourteen to one Bar. Join us in a moment for action from Thursk. You join us ahead of the racing at Thursk. Next race at Thursk is the four oh five race. Uh, where my girl Maisie is the non-runner. Oriental Lily is favourite here at seven to four. It's five to one. Kai Kai Yorkshire Pudding five to one. It thirteen to two. Cody Cat eight to one. Lexington Sky and fourteen to one. Bar. Join us in a moment for action from Thursk. You join us ahead of the racing at Thursk. Next race at Thursk is the four oh five race. Uh, where my girl Maisie is the non-runner. Oriental Lily is favourite here at seven to four. It's five to one. Kai Kai Yorkshire Pudding five to one. It thirteen to two. Cody Cat eight to one. Lexington Sky and fourteen to one. Bar. Join us in a moment for action from Thursk. You join us ahead of the racing at Thursk. Next race at Thursk is the four oh five race. Uh, where my girl Maisie is the non-runner. Oriental Lily is favourite here at seven to four. It's five to one. Kai Kai Yorkshire Pudding five to one. It thirteen to two. Cody Cat eight to one. Lexington Sky and fourteen to one. Bar. Join us in a moment for action from Thursk. You join us ahead of the racing at Thursk. Next race at Thursk is the four oh five race. Uh, where my girl Maisie is the non-runner. Oriental Lily is favourite here at seven to four. It's five to one. Kai Kai Yorkshire Pudding five to one. It thirteen to two. Cody Cat eight to one. Lexington Sky and fourteen to one. Bar. Join us in a moment for action from Thursk. You join us ahead of the racing at Thursk. Next race at Thursk is the four oh five race. Uh, where my girl Maisie is the non-runner. Oriental Lily is favourite here at seven to four. It's five to one. Kai Kai Yorkshire Pudding five to one. It thirteen to two. Cody Cat eight to one. Lexington Sky and fourteen to one. Bar. Join us in a moment for action from Thursk. You join us ahead of the racing at Thursk. Next race at Thursk is the four oh five race. Uh, where my girl Maisie is the non-runner. Oriental Lily is favourite here at seven to four. It's five to one. Kai Kai Yorkshire Pudding five to one. It thirteen to two. Cody Cat eight to one. Lexington Sky and fourteen to one. Bar. Join us in a moment for action from Thursk. You join us ahead of the racing at Thursk. Next race at Thursk is the four oh five race. Uh, where my girl Maisie is the non-runner. Oriental Lily is favourite here at seven to four. It's five to one. Kai Kai Yorkshire Pudding five to one. It thirteen to two. Cody Cat eight to one. Lexington Sky and fourteen to one. Bar. Join us in a moment for action from Thursk. You join us ahead of the racing at Thursk. Next race at Thursk is the four oh five race. Uh, where my girl Maisie is the non-runner. Oriental Lily is favourite here at seven to four. It's five to one. Kai Kai Yorkshire Pudding five to one. It thirteen to two. Cody Cat eight to one. Lexington Sky and fourteen to one. Bar. Join us in a moment for action from Thursk. You join us ahead of the racing at Thursk. Next race at Thursk is the four oh five race. Uh, where my girl Maisie is the non-runner. Oriental Lily is favourite here at seven to four. It's five to one. Kai Kai Yorkshire Pudding five to one. It thirteen to two. Cody Cat eight to one. Lexington Sky and fourteen to one. Bar. Join us in a moment for action from Thursk. You join us ahead of the racing at Thursk. Next race at Thursk is the four oh five race. Uh, where my girl Maisie is the non-runner. Oriental Lily is favourite here at seven to four. It's five to one. Kai Kai Yorkshire Pudding five to one. It thirteen to two. Cody Cat eight to one. Lexington Sky and fourteen to one. Bar. Join us in a moment for action from Thursk. You join us ahead of the racing at Thursk. Next race at Thursk is the four oh five race. Uh, where my girl Maisie is the non-runner. Oriental Lily is favourite here at seven to four. It's five to one. 
Kai Kai. Yorkshire Pudding, 5 to 1. 13 to 2, Cody Cat. 8 to 1, Lexington Sky. And welcome back to the action at Thirsk, where the favourite here is uh, Oriental Lily. Oriental Lily currently around a 6 to 4 chance. Kai Kai, Kai is 11 to 2. 13 to 2, the price of Cody Cat. It's 13 to 2, Yorkshire Pudding. Lexington Sky is next in at 8 to 1. Dandy Bird, 14. 16 to 1, Dusty Blue. Magical Molly Joe. Is 25 to 1 and Quiet Moment, the complete outsider at 33 to 1 for a Phillies handicap over six furlongs. This is the 405 at Thirsk. It's race number six on their card. Number 10, My Girl Maisie, the non runner. The last one is about to go in. Oriental Lily, the market leader here for Jim Goldie and Danny Tudope. Danny Lane at Phillies at handicap, just starting a little bit left handed on ex exiting the starting stores was Lexington Sky. And doing a solo over to the far side is Quiet Moment as Lexington Sky now comes back across. Is about to go in Oriental Lily, uh, the, the market leader here for Jim Goldie and Danny Tudor. Races in at Phillies at Handicap, just starting a little bit left handed on it, exiting the starting stores as Lexington Sky and doing a solo over to the far side is Quiet Moment as Lexington Sky now comes back across. Is about to go in Oriental Lily, the market leader here for Jim Goldie and Danny Tudor. Races in at Phillies at Handicap, just starting a little bit left handed on it, exiting the starting stores as Lexington Sky and doing a solo. To the far side is a quiet moment as Lexington Sky now comes back across. It's about to go in. Oriental Lily, the market leader here, Jim Goldie and Danny Tudor. Phillies at handicap, starting a little bit left handed on the exiting the starting stores as Lexington Sky. Doing a solo to the far side is a quiet moment as Lexington Sky now comes back across. It's about to go in. Oriental Lily, the market leader here, Jim Goldie and Danny Tudor. Phillies at handicap, starting a little bit left handed. Left handed way to get exiting the starting stores is left side in the sky. And doing a solo to the far side is a quiet moment. And left side in the sky now comes back in the sky. It's about to go in. Oriental Lily. Even to do with the price of the winner here. Uh, Kiki for Brand Smart Connor Beasley. Already a winner this season on the All Weather as well. And has uh, uh, gone on to take the money uh, this afternoon. Oriental Lily. Every chance Oriental Lily just outrun basically inside the last hundred yards by Kiki. Um or just well you just couldn't get to Kiki basically in the last uh, hundred yards. Uh, Oriental Lily. And uh, Kiki has won nicely enough in the end. So it's Kiki the winner. Second place Oriental Lily and Cody Cat in third, just waiting for those prices to come through. Brian Smart Connor Beasley responsible for the winner of that race over at Thirst for the Phillies. That was a, a sprint handicap for the Phillies there. Six furlongs was covered. And Kiki is a winner for the second time this year. 11 to 2, the price of the winner. 6 to 4, favourite. The second and 13 to 2, the price of the third. Thirsk, 405. First number 5, Kiki, 11 to 2. Second number 8, Oriental Lily, 6 to 4, favourite. Third number 3, Cody Cat, 13 to 2. Non runner number 10, and 9 ran. So that's uh, the way they came home there at Thirsk in the 405. Coming next, we've got more racing from Ascot, and we're now on to the 425 there at Ascot. There are a, a couple of non-runners uh, in that race. race uh, there is uh, a five furlong handicap. Just to tell you, they go without number three, Yalta, and also number seven, Gravity Flow. That leaves a field of 13 to go to post. Number 10, Shamshon the favourite, course and distance winner, Trainer Stuart Williams, Jim Crowley, he takes the ride on board Shamshon, who, uh, as I was saying, is a C and D winner, having won here at uh, the last meeting, and actually beat a few of today's rivals, beat Top Boy by half a length on that occasion, Swad the Low was in, th in fourth place, and Monsieur Joe was some way back. Jack Dexter is fancied by a few today. Uh, for this uh, particular race, Jack Dexter, who goes well when there's cut in the ground frame by Jim Goldie, is a course winner at Ascot over seven furlongs in the past. This is over five, ran fourth at Hamilton last time. And Swadelow, as I've just mentioned in dispatches, uh, was only 
just behind Shamshon here. Uh, sorry, Shamshon at Newmarket when Shamshon won at Newmarket. But Shamshon, incidentally, is a course and disc winner here at Ascot in soft ground. That was last autumn. So join us for that race at Ascot. So coming up next from Ascot, we've got a five furlong handicap, Yalta number three, and number seven, Gravity Flow of the non runners. Favourite is Shamshon, who is a course and distance winner, won their last autumn in soft ground, was winner at Newmarket last time when beating top boys Swatherlow and Miss Your Joe. Swatherlow only just behind Shamshon that day and renews rivalry. Jack Dexter is another course winner at Ascot in the soft ground, has won over further in the past. Well, they are some of the leading players in this race coming up there at 4.25. So coming up next from Ascot, we've got a five furlong handicap, Yalta number three and number seven, Gravity Flow of the non-runners. Favourite is Shamshon, who is a course and distance winner, won their last autumn in soft brown, was winner at Newmarket last time when beating top boys Swatherlow and Miss Your Joe. Swatherlow only just behind Shamshon that day and renews rivalry. Jack Dexter is another course winner at Ascot in the soft brown, has won over further in the past. Well, they are some of the leading players in this race coming up there at 4.25. So coming up next from Ascot, we've got a five furlong handicap, Yalta number three and number seven, Gravity Flow of the non-runners. Favourite is Shamshon, who is a course and distance winner, won their last autumn in soft brown, was winner at Newmarket last time when beating top boys Swatherlow and Miss Your Joe. Swatherlow only just behind Shamshon that day and renews rivalry. Jack Dexter is another course winner at Ascot in the soft brown, has won over further in the past. Well, they are some of the leading players in this race coming up there at 4.25. So coming up next from Ascot, we've got a five furlong handicap. Nicky Henderson now in the hands of Don McCain, Will Kennedy, they're looking for a double on the card, is a five to one shot, hopes wishes for Barry Brennan and Tommy Dowling taking off the seven is twelve to one, been nibbled at that one, finished fifth last time around Armour and Carly but been nibbled at at prices and that's how they bet for this upcoming Mayor's Handicap Hurdle, we'll be back to your talks with all the action very shortly. We certainly will be, time to get back to your talks, the two to one misspent heads the market here. Um, it's a pretty tight a betting affair not a lot between first and last in the market apart that is from hopes wishes but it's two to one misspent Bredain Rebel 11 to 4 open 9 to 4 takes a walk 7 to 2 from 4 to 1 Clemency fit the brief 7 to 2 16 to 1 hopes wishes that's how they bet we did have joint favourites for a time misspent and Bredain Rebel but Bredain Rebel takes a little bit of a walk in the market here and uh, Miss Spent having its first start here for the Skelton team. It is that heads the market. Bredain Rebel was a winner here last time. Was a 33 to 1 shot. Steps up half a mile in trip here. And starts here off a mark of 105. 105 was a winner of a point to point uh, back in January. So And that was on soft ground. I don't think the trip will worry this Bredain Rebel at all. So. Uh, be interesting to see how that one's misspent best form was when beating Royal Debutante at Huntingdon in November of last year on good to soft uh, started its handicapping days off 112 is now off 106 first run as we said here for the Skelton team mark of 108 for Clemency was a fair bit higher than that at her best with um, Nicky Anderson was third behind Mystic Sky at Southall on, deb on debut here for the stable pound lower here and fit the breath will beaten behind tours at Worcester travel well for a while on that occasion fit the breath and uh, she made the running looks at, looking at the body language of the jockeys Adrian Heskin's gonna hold this one up here and uh, was runner up behind Mystic Sky in that race at Southall that saw Clemency back in third so an interesting little race um, uh, the pound better off Clemency is at uh, those but uh, the market is very tight 7 to 4 they're misspent the money's come for the favourite Bredain Rebel 3 to 1 Clemency out to 4 to 1 Fit the Breathe comes into 7 to 2 11 to 1 from 16 for Hope's Wishes bit of support there for the rag 
Barry Brennan, Tommy Downing taking the seven off here. Making their way towards the start. The starters calling them in. Clemency it is. It's going to take them along here as they still walk towards the starter in worsening conditions, I'd have to say, at Utoxeter. Coming into line. Just waiting for the flags to be dropped. Clemency. It is that uh, it's going to take them along here. And the starter has dropped his flag. They're off and racing. Clemency it is that goes on. Quickly opens up a league of some four or five links here. Clemency sent about a business early by Will Kennedy from Miss Bend and Bredane Rebel. They're followed through by Hope's Wishes. And at the rear of the field is Fit the Brief. They say face up towards their first flight. And it's Clemency into it. Jumps it well from Bredane Rebel. On the outside of that one is Miss Spend. Three links back to Hope's Wishes and at the rear of the field is Fit the Brief. Adrian Heskin settling that one out the back. As they continue their journey down the back and on towards flight number two. The last of the, just the two flights down the back straight here this afternoon at Utoxeter and it's Clemency. Sent into this clear lead by Will Kennedy. Leads up from Miss Spent and Harry Skelton on the outside of Bredain Rebel and the excellent Sean Quinlan. Three lengths further back then to Hope's Wishes and Fit the Breath at the back of the pack. Continuing their journey down the back and it's Clemency with this clear lead here from Bredain Rebel and Miss Spent. A couple of lengths back to Hope's Wishes and Fit the Breath. Still restrained at the rear by Adrian Heskin. Got his hands firmly down on the horse's neck on a withers just trying to get her settled here and doing a pretty good job of it she was very keen at Worcester last time as they come into the straight for the first time and face up towards the first of three flights down the home straight here and they'll have a complete circuit to go Clemency it is set in this decent looking gallop from Bredain Rebel Sean Quinn and Jenny Candish on the inside from Miss Bent Harry and Dan Skelton then comes Barry Brennan's runner Hope's Wishes, Tommy Downing taking the seven off and Tom George's fit the breathe at the rear of the field under Adrian Heskin as they jump the first in the straight and on landing there fit the breathe picked up the rear bridle uh, quite keenly there and again Adrian Heskin just restrains her and drops her towards the back of the pack as they face up towards the middle one in worsening conditions here now at Utoxton officially good to soft with Clemency comes towards the next jumps it nicely good jump on the outside there by Miss Spence still travels strongly Bredain Rebel to the inner they're followed through by fit the breathe and hopes wishes down towards the next be a last in a circuit's time and good jump by the leader Clemency there and fit the brief really did dive at that and it was a flipping hurdle it was Bredain Rebel that had clipped it and as it went down uh, fit the brief dived at it and it came back up and hit it halfway up but uh, the partnership is still intact but it was the flipping hurdle that caused the mistake and I say go around left-handed towards their point of departure the advantage here was with Clemency Clemency leads up length and a half to Miss Spent on the outside of Bredain Rebel they're followed through by Hope's Wishes and Fit the Breath at the back of the pack facing up towards the first of two flights down the back they've got five in all to jump here and it's still Clemency with this advantage only a narrow one though to on the outside still well there Miss Spent travels strongly under Harry Skelton as they come towards the first flight down the back Clemency asked for a big one got it Will Kennedy Miss Spent on the outside of Bredain Rebel followed through then by Hope's Wish he still travels okay and fit the brief at the rear of the field still travels very strongly in the hands of Adrian Heskin they got four flights to jump at about a mile to race from this point and it's still Clemency leads up length and half to Miss Spent Bredain Rebel on the inside hopes wishes and fit the brief and all five of these mares are travelling very sweetly as they come towards this next flight of hurdles a mistake by the leader put down on Will Kennedy there fit the brief another slight mistake at the rear of the field as well as they continue their journey down the back they've got about six furlongs to race and Clemency it is that leads from fit the on the outside Miss Spent followed through by Bredain Rebel Sean Quinlan just starts to niggle away at that one as they continue their journey now they start the left-handed spin out of the back straight hopes wishes still travels okay still plenty of chances here and they still haven't got to clemency leads up from miss spent hopes wishes travels a lot stronger than Bredain rebel and moves into the third spot then fit the priest still there with every chance at the rear of the field 
Half a mile to race and three flights of hurdles to jump it into the straight. Clemency it is that leads. Miss Spent absolutely cruises up on the outside here under Harry Skelton. Sean Quinlan and Bredain Rebel still boxing away. Hopes, wishes and fit to breathe. Three from home. Oh, slight mistake there by Hope's Wishes, and it's Miss Spent that's come through absolutely cantering on the outside of Clemency as they come down towards two from home. Harry Skelton, though, lets out an inch of rain, and this one goes on. Miss Spent down towards two from home. See how she jumps this one? Jumps it really nicely. Hope's Wishes, Clemency, and Fit the Brief trying to give chase. Now Harry Skelton asks Miss Spent to lengthen her stride, and she does so, and quickly goes four or five lengths to the good. Miss Spent down towards the final flight jumps it well and this is all over miss spent with a clear advantage harry skelton takes a long look under his left arm and sees his well clear miss spent not doing a lot out in front but is already 10 to 12 length clear as a race up towards line and miss spent pushed out by harry skelton will win it well good running second by hopes wishes miss spent beats hopes wishes they were clear of fit the brief bridane rebel and clemency has finished at last yeah, good performance by the favourite Miss Spent. Was well back beforehand and wins it and wins it nicely. Utoxida, 4.15. First number four, Miss Spent, 11 to 8 favourite. Second number one, Hopes Wishes at 12 to 1. All five ran. That was the 4.15 contest. First start for the Skelton team by Miss Spent and does it really nicely there. Travel well and jump well. Didn't do a lot when it hit the front, but has come home a very ready winner indeed. The handicapper will surely have his say on what happens to Miss Spent and where the uh, team place it next. Well, I wouldn't be at all surprised to see this one in again quite quickly after that performance. Got a handicap chase coming up next over two miles the trip for the 445 contest. Cut the corner has been in good form got a big weight 12 stone 5 and Alex Edwards takes 7 pounds off here is still favourite at 6 to 4 got a Fisher Martin of 126 got that 7 pound penalty brings it into this one beating Hepiger here at Utoxeter um, that was on the 19th of July by 9 lengths a really good performance by that one cut the corner on that occasion and Alex Edwards was on board then takes a 7 off again here Mawala, Callum Bewley on board that one for Lisa Harrison, another one who carries a penalty for victory at Market Raisin when beating Spring Steel. That was just on the 22nd of July, one by three quarters of length on that occasion, carries the penalty here. Solar Impulse, but former Cheltenham Festival winner, of course, Dave Cross on board, now as low as 122. Been off the same mark in its last three starts, two runner-up spots at Utoxeter and at Southall. Was a good run at Aintree behind the flying portrait, travelled very well for a long way there, and it is interesting off this mark of 122 Dave Cross on board Red Giant Sean Quinlan on board that one for Jenny Candlish finished by Red Riverman here last time on the 11th of July and uh, is off a mark of 106 here Red Giant and Desert Moor View Connor Orr on board for Ron Harris is a 10 to 1 shot the Yank Danny Hiscott takes off the 5 for Dave Bridgewater is 11 to 1 that's how they bet we'll be back There last autumn in soft brown was winner at Newmarket last time when beating top boys Swadelow and Miss Your Joe Swadelow only just behind Shamshon that day and renews rivalry. Jack Dexter's another course winner at Ascot in the soft brown has won over further in the past. Well, they are some of the leading players in this race coming up there at 4:25. So coming up next from Ascot, we've got a five furlong handicap. Yalta number three and number seven, Gravity Flow are the non-runners. Favourite is Shamshon, who is a course and distance winner. Won there last autumn in soft brown. Was winner at Newmarket last time when beating top boys Swadelow and Miss Your Joe. Swadelow only just behind Shamshon that day and renews rivalry. Jack Dexter is another course winner at Ascot in the soft brown. Has won over further in the past. Well, they are some of the leading players in this race coming up there at 4.25. 
So coming up next from Ascot, we've got a five furlong handicap. Yalta number three, number seven, Gravity Flow are the non runners. Favourite is Shamshon, who is a course and distance winner. Won there last autumn in Soft Brown, was winner at Newmarket last time when beating top boys Swatherlow and Monsieur Joe. Swatherlow only just behind Shamshon that day and renews rivalry. Jack Dexter is another course winner at Ascot in the Soft Brown, has won over further in the past. Well, they are some of the leading players in this race coming up there at 4.25. So coming up next from Ascot, we've got a five furlong handicap. Yalta number three and number seven, Gravity Flow are the non-runners. Favourite is Shamshon, who is a course and distance winner. Won there last autumn in Soft Brown, was winner at Newmarket last time. So the race coming up now from Ascot is uh, the 4.25. It's a sprint handicap. Runners then moving up into the starting stalls. Let's have a, a look at them. Let's have a look at the betting. Yelta and Gravity Flow are the non-runners. Shamshon 7-2 favourite. Jack Dexter 5-1. Uh, it is 15-2 Swada Low. 8-1 Copper Knight. Uh, Affendem is 8-1. 9-1 are the latest price for Cool Fitch. 11 to 1 at Petock side, Robot Boy is 12s, Miss Your Joe 14s, and it's a 16 to 1 bar, and they are going in. 13 of them over five furlongs here at Ascot for the 425. This is race number six on their program. Runners then moving up into the starting stalls. Shamshon, the 7 to 2 favourite. And uh, they're going in. Jack Dexter five to one. Swad the low fifteen to two. And still out of line is just glamorous. Just glamorous drawn in stall number twelve. So they go forward. Stand by. All in. And they're off. Racing over five furlongs, Cool Fitch missed the beat and lost quite a few lengths. And in the early part of the race, just Glamorous is well up there with the pace. And that one is racing towards the stand side and showing Dash is Copper Knight. Just off the lead is Petock side. Over on the far side is Swada Lowe's in company with Monsieur Joe. Jack Dexter's behind the leaders with Exceed the Limit to the near side. Uh, Vern Castle is behind the pace setters. And as they head down towards the halfway marker, being pushed along near side, is Robot Boy and towards the centre it's Copper Knight who's in front by no more than a length to Swada Low and Petock side and Robot Boy Jack Dexter angling for a run there trying to kick away from the others Shamshon has never landed a blow a furlong left to go and it's Jack Dexter who's quickening up out of the ground here Jack Dexter from Swada Low they've moved on from Copper Knight staying on to the near side is Petock side Jack Dexter is in front and driven out Jack Dexter the winner tight call for second Pet side and Swadalo involved. So Jack Dexter has won it. That's another course win for Jack Dexter. Has won here over seven furlongs in the past, but he does like to get his, his toe in. And Jack Dexter has won for Jim Goldie at five to one. Good prize that. Going back up to Scotland, Jack Dexter, the winner at five to one. Close call for second place between Swadalo and and Pedic side, and regarding Shamshon, never landed a blow whatsoever. No impression whatsoever uh, from Shamshon in the end. Just wait for the judge to confirm second place here at, Ac at Ascot. Quite a few didn't really get into the race, to be fair. Um, Affendum never really got into the race, nor did Top Boy. But it was Jack Dexter who won it, number 13. Came out of stall number one, so it's drawn right over on the far side, Jack Dexter. Our winner here this afternoon. Petic side might have just got second there from Soir de Lowe's. Pretty tight for second. I was favouring Petic side, who was staying on the near side, and Petic side is second. Soir de Lowe third. 5 to 1, 11 to 1. And 15 to 2 the starting prices. Ask. At 425, first number 13, Jack Dexter, 5 to 1. Second number 14, Petic Side, 11 to 1. Third number 9, Swadalo, 15 to 2. Non runners numbers 3 and 7, and 13 ran. So there you go, that's the result there over at Ascot. 
of the 425. Coming up next on the service, we've got racing from Thursk, and the 435 is up next at Thursk, where Paris Mountain is the non runner. Having a look at the latest odds for this seven furlong handicap, and the favourite at 11, joint favourites at 11 to 2 are Pesher de, de Pearl and Mulzim, Fayez 13 to 2, 6 to 1 Rock and Roller, Right Action is 7 to 1, 8 to 1 Proud Archie, and it's 10 to 1 Bar. Action coming away from Thursk next at 4.35. A good competitive seven furlong handicap for the grade. Coming up next on the service, we've got racing from Thursk. And the 4.35 is up next at Thursk, where Paris Mountain is the non-runner. Having a look at the latest odds for this seven furlong handicap and the favourite at 11, joint favourites at 11 to 2 are Pesher de, de Pearl and Mulzim, Fayez 13 to 2, 6 to 1 Rock and Roller, Right Action is 7 to 1, 8 to 1 Proud Archie and it's 10 to 1 Bar, Action coming away from Thursk next at 4.35, a good competitive seven furlong handicap for the grade. Coming up next on the service, we've got racing from Thursk, and the 435 is up next at Thursk, where Paris Mountain is the non runner. Having a look at the latest odds for this seven furlong handicap, and the favourite at 11, joint favourites at 11 to 2 are Pesher de, de Pearl and Mulzim, Fayez 13 to 2, 6 to 1 Rock and Roller, Right Action is 7 to 1, 8 to 1 Proud Archie, and it's 10 to 1 Bar. Action coming away from Thursk next at 4.35, a good competitive seven furlong handicap for the grade. Coming up next on the service, we've got racing from Thursk, and the 4.35 is up next at Thursk, where Paris Mountain is the non runner. Having a look at the latest odds for this seven furlong handicap and the favourite at 11, joint favourites at 11 to 2 are Pesher de, de Pearl and Mulzim, Fayez 13 to 2, 6 to 1 Rock and Roller, Right Action is 7 to 1, 8 to 1 Proud Archie and it's 10 to 1 Bar, Action coming away from Thursk next at 4.35, a good competitive seven furlong handicap for the grade. Coming up next on the service, we've got racing from Thursk, and the 435 is up next at Thursk, where Paris Mountain is the non runner. Having a look at the latest odds for this seven furlong handicap, and the favourite at 11, joint favourites at 11 to 2 are Pesher de, de Pearl and Mulzim, Fayez 13 to 2, 6 to 1 Rock and Roller, Right Action is 7 to 1, 8 to 1 Proud Archie, and it's 10 to 1 Bar. Action coming away from Thursk next at 4.35, a good competitive seven furlong handicap for the grade. Coming up next on the service, we've got racing from Thursk, and the 4.35 is up next at Thursk, where Paris Mountain is the non runner. Having a look at the latest odds for this seven furlong handicap and the favourite at 11, joint favourites at 11 to 2 are Pesher de, de Pearl and Mulzim, Fayez 13 to 2, 6 to 1 Rock and Roller, Right Action is 7 to 1, 8 to 1 Proud Archie and it's 10 to 1 Bar, Action coming away from Thursk next at 4.35, a good competitive seven furlong handicap for the grade. Coming up next on the service, we've got racing from Thursk, and the 435 is up next at Thursk, where Paris Mountain is the non runner. <laughs> Thank you. 
time, a good competitive seven run handicap. Coming up next on the service, we've got racing from Thirsk, and 435 is up next at Thirsk, where Paris Mountain is the non runner. Having a look at the latest odds for this Semper and Handicap and the favourite at 11. Joint players 11 to 2 are Pesher, De, De Pearl and Mulzim. Fayez 13 to 2, 6 to 1 Rock and Roller. Right action is 7 to 1, 8 to 1 Proud Archie and it's 10 to 1 Bar. Action coming away from Thirsk next at 4.35. A good competitive Semper and Handicap for the break. Coming up next on the service, we've got racing from Thirsk, and 4.35 is up next at Thirsk, where Paris Mountain is the non-runner. Having a look at the latest odds for this Semper and Handicap, and the favourite at 11, joint players 11 to 2, are Pesha, De, De Pearl and Mulzim. Fayez 13 to 2, 6 to 1 Rock and Roller. Right action is 7 to 1, 8 to 1 Proud Archie, and it's 10 to 1 Bar. Action coming away from Thirsk next at 4.35. A good competitive seven-filling handicap for the grade. Coming up next on the service, we've got racing from Thirsk. And 4.35 is up next at Thirsk, where Paris Mountain is the non-runner. Having a look at the latest odds for this seven furlong handicap and the favourite at 11. Joint players 11 to 2 are Pesha, De, De Pearl and Mulzim. Fayez 13 to 2, 6 to 1 Rock and Roller. Right action is 7 to 1, 8 to 1 Proud Archie and it's 10 to 1 Bar. Action coming away from Thirsk next at 4.35. A good competitive seven furlong handicap for the grade. Coming up next on the service, we've got racing from Thirsk, and 4.35 is up next at Thirsk, where Paris Mountain is the non-runner. Having a look at the latest odds for this seven and handicap, and the favourite at 11. Joint players 11 to 2 are Pesha, De, De Pearl and Mulzim. Fayez 13 to 2, 6 to 1 Rock and Roller. Right action is 7 to 1, 8 to 1 Proud Archie, and it's 10 to 1 Bar. Action coming away from Thirsk next at 4.35. A good competitive seven filling handicap for the grade. And welcome back. Now, don't worry, you haven't missed a trip because racing's running late here at Thirsk. Number nine, Hemingway, unseated Joe Doyle on the way down to the start. Now, has been withdrawn. Uh, the, the latest prices we've got here at at Thirsk on this particular race, nine to two is the price of Mulzim. Uh, Rock and Roller five to one, six to one about Fayez, seven to one Proud Archie. Pesha de Pearl is eight to one along with Right Action. Ventura Secret seventeen to two, twelve to one Groupie. Uh, I Emes La Vie is the next one in at twelve to one, and uh, Heavenly Angel twenty two to one. Just to confirm then they are going without Hemingway. Hemingway is out of this race. So this is the 4.35 race over at Thirsk. Here's Gareth. Racing with a slightly awkward beginning from right action. We jumped up a little as the gates crashed back for this, the Ladies' Day Saturday, the 9th of September book now handicap. Heavenly Angel is away well over towards the inside. Ventura Secret is parked out and up in between them is Rock and Roller. Then along the inside at Running Rails, Proud Archie together with Mulls in they lie as the fourth and fifth place runners on turning out of the back straight. Uh, two lengths back then to find Aimé La Vie ahead of uh, Groupie, then Fayez in the grey with the blue stars at the back end of the field with Pesha de Pearl uh, circumnavigating those and as they make the left-handed swing back uh, towards the home straight, last of all is right action. It would be around about 10 or 12 lengths between first and last, and up ahead it is Heavenly Angel in the sheepskin nose, but now coming under pressure, travelling a little stronger to the outside is Ventura Secret, but still a head or so behind. Two lengths back to Rock and Roller, who's now being asked 
for a little bit extra with Moles in the striped cap on the outside coming into it eye-catchingly well away to the far left Aimé Levy will have a say late as well then Proud Arches they race on down inside their final two furlongs Heavenly Angel very quickly dropped away and now it's Aimé Levy who's gone for home and Aimé Levy with a furlong to run kicks on into the lead with Fayez now emerging as the danger towards the outside with Ventura Secret back in third and one pace and up to the line they come it's Aimé Levy who shows the way here and he's going to score for trainer Richard Fahey under Paul Hannigan by around about a length or so to Fayez in second and uh, then in behind those right action who was staying on powerfully towards the outside of Ventura Secret yeah that was the way they came home there Aimé Levy the winner of the 435 race over at Thursk um, bear in mind that Hemingway didn't go here.